Welcome to Math with Professor V. Here's your latest integral of the day. That's part of our countdown to 2025, 13 integrals in 13 days. And we haven't done any improper integrals yet, so I thought it's high time we do one. And this one is actually an improper integral for two reasons. First, it's pretty obvious when you have infinity or negative infinity as one of your limits of integration, it's an improper integral. We have to rewrite it um, using a limit. And then the other issue is that the integrand is actually not defined at zero, right? Zero is not in the domain. It would make the denominator zero. So we have to also replace that limit with some sort of dummy variable and then take the limit as, you know, A, I'm going to use approach to zero. So because we have two problems, we have to split this into two integrals. You deal with each one at a time. And then I have to make sure as well, are there any issues between zero and infinity that I would also need to address? When I say issues, I mean, is there any other number between zero and infinity where this integrand is not defined? Well, you might be worried about negative one, but that's not an issue here because we're going from zero to infinity. And also negative one's not even in the domain. So don't, don't stress too much about that, okay? So we're gonna split this up. I'm gonna go from zero to, and then you get to pick really any number between zero and infinity. I, I'm gonna pick one just because it's the nicest to work with, but you you do you, all right? If you do something else that won't come out as cute, I'm just, I'm warning you. So don't get too creative. Zero to one dx over square root of x times one plus x plus, and then pick up where you left off, one to infinity dx over square root of x times 1 plus x. So I'm going to replace this 0 now with some letter, some variable. I call it dummy variable. Usually we use like a or b when the limit is a constant that's making this undefined. So I'm going to use a. This is the limit as a approaches 0 from the right. And then we're going to have integral from a to 1. Now, my students sometimes get confused when they're first learning this. How do you know if you're approaching from the right or the left? So the integral is from 0 to 1. The only way that you can stay on this interval and approach 0 is from the right side. Okay? And then we have here dx over square root of x. Why is that? That's so crooked, isn't it? My apologies. This is actually the second time I'm recording this. I recorded it all the way through and it wasn't recording. So plus, then the other issue is infinity. So I'm going to write it as the limit as t approaches infinity integral 1 to t dx over square root of x times 1 plus x. Okay, now I'm looking at each of these integrals. They're the same. And I can't evaluate them in one step. I'm thinking, yep, from my experience, I'm going to need to do a U sub. And whenever we U sub, we also have to change our limits of integration. And it's just feeling like I'm going to be doing double work, right? Because they're the same integral. They just have different limits. And I don't feel like going through the process twice, setting up the U sub twice. So what to do in a scenario like this? You don't just say, oh, I'm going to illegally dump the limits of integration and then bring them back in at the very end. That's not the precise way to do it. It just takes two extra seconds and then you're not doing something illegal in your work. You just say, consider, everybody, consider the following indefinite integral. And then I'm going to go ahead, find the antiderivative, do my U sub with no limits of integration, and then come back in with the antiderivative. But I'm not doing anything illegal or um, sloppy because I'm saying, hey, consider this side problem whilst I'm solving everything else, okay? And then hopefully you can kind of spot what to do. You guys have been doing so many integrals. X is rad X squared, right? So we're just gonna come in with the U sub, let U equal rad X, then DU is one over two rad X DX. Do I have that kind of? I have DX over rad X, uh-huh, uh-huh. So two DU is DX over rad X, beautiful. Okay, so then this integral can be rewritten as 2du over 1 plus u squared. Very good. We know that antiderivative to tan inverse of u plus c. Put plus c because this one's indefinite. So 2 tan inverse of rad x plus c. So then, whoa, that was curious. 
so I was very curious. So now we can just come in, pick up where we left off with our limits, but instead of writing out this integral, I'm just gonna replace it with the antiderivative. No plus C, I'm just gonna have the limits on the right from A to one. So then we have now the limit as A approaches zero from the right, two tan inverse of rad x evaluated from, from A to one, from A to one, plus limit as t approaches infinity to tan inverse of rad x from 1 to t. Those are my limits over here. 1 to t. Good? Okay. We can do both of these at the same time. I think it's fine. Limit a goes to 0 from the right. Let's keep the 2 out. This is going to be tan inverse of rad 1 is still 1. Tan inverse of rad a plus limit t goes to infinity two times. This is 10 inverse rad t minus 10 inverse of one. Okay, beautiful. So let's see, 10 inverse of one, that's just pi over four. And then here, a is approaching zero from the right, perfect, because I can't take the square root if it was approaching zero from the left, it wouldn't be defined. Only square roots of positive numbers make sense here. And then 10 inverse of square root of zero is going to zero. 10 inverse of zero, uh -huh. zero. So this is approaching zero. So this whole first limit is approaching two times pi over four, okay? Plus what's going on over here now. So t is going to infinity, so square root of Infinity is still approaching infinity. What's tan inverse of infinity basically approaching? You've got to think of the graph of tan inverse. That's going to pi over 2. So you have to, hopefully you were imagining the graph, yeah, of tan inverse. Do you need me to draw it really quickly? Burn this in the brain. Burn this in the brain. This and like the unit circle, right? Here's pi over 2. And then the other asymptote is at negative pi over 2 tell my students that. And if you can't burn it in the brain, then it's time to go to the tattoo parlor. And then they go, Professor V, really, would you let us look at a tattoo? I said, if you get a permanent tattoo of some graph or something, and you're going to keep it with you the rest of your life, yeah, you can look at it during the test. Okay. T approaches infinity, tan inverse is going to pi over two. Minus tan inverse of one. Oh, we just talked about it. Pi over four. So then this limit is 2 times pi over 2 minus pi over 4. That's pi over 4. Oh, look at that. Two constants. So beautiful. This is pi over 2 plus another pi over 2, which is pi. So the limit exists as a finite number, which means this improper integral is convergent or it converges. Okay. Now, if anything here from the first limit or the second limit, had resulted in infinity or negative infinity being our limit, then the whole thing would diverge. Say this went to pi over two, but this went to infinity, diverges, or vice versa. Or if one goes to positive infinity and one goes to negative infinity, diverges. Both must converge to finite numbers in order for the overall integral to be convergent, okay? Very good. I hope you enjoyed this integral. If you need to review improper integrals, I totally feel you. I have so many videos on that topic. As, long, as well as a bunch of improper integrals in this playlist. Not as many as, you know, the proper ones, but I've done several. So I'll link some videos in the description should you be brushing up. If you're going to go to differential equations and you've just finished Calc 2, oh my goodness, yes, you do a bunch of improper integrals, especially when doing Laplace transform. So don't forget this stuff. It is crucial. Yeah, you can't forget anything. That's the thing about math. Anyways, I hope you're enjoying this countdown to 2025 series. I will be back tomorrow, of course. You can also follow me on Instagram and TikTok as long as it's here in the US. Same handle, Math with Professor V. I love you all so much. Thanks for your support.